Welcome to our latest adventure. Today we explore even further Hildebrand adventures from Stormblood, part two. Hey everyone, and welcome to the Eorzean Archons. I'm FaZe. And I'm Catherine. This video will cover the even further Hildebrand adventures quest through Don't Do the Duprism. There will be no spoilers in this video after the Stormblood expansion. Remember to subscribe and click the bell icon if you'd like to be notified of future videos. Let's get started. It was a cool, clear day. You could see a long way, not as far as Hildebrand had gone. Where was that fool? Cat should have been back by now with an update. He's gone again. Off on some crazy lead to find your Jimbo. They need us, FaZe. I told you, Cat, it's Shigure's problem now. We got him the job. Let the police handle this. How many sword chasers we gotta catch before you realize this ain't profitable? When have you ever been in it for the money? You know deep down you've got a soft spot for the guy? There's something familiar about this Yojimbo fella. We've gotta follow through on this case. <sighs> I've had my doubts as well. Something's not sitting right about this case. And I know I won't be content with the truth till I stare it down with my own eyes. Looks like we're off on another adventure. As we get back on the case of the missing sword, we ask Shigure if he's found any leads while we are away. Unfortunately, he's no closer to tracking down Yojimbo. Hildebrand and Nashu rejoin us as they too share that they have no lead. However, they did bring some of that fancy hair tonic for Shigure, but before that, we spot the gentle dead man from earlier, still running around in the wolf costume. He tells us that he was on his way back to Eorzea when a local fisherman told him a tale of a Funai Yure, a far eastern variety of undead, roaming the shores. He figured he'd expand the Gentle Dead Army to ghosts now, too, though the locals in Kugane haven't given him any more information on this roaming ghost. Since we're all a bit stuck on our investigations, we decide to team up and track down Yojimbo together. Asking around, we get little info on Yojimbo's whereabouts, but a lot on the wolf burglar we bagged earlier. Seems the common people of Kugane actually liked the Lupin, saying he only stole from the corrupt merchants and would in return give the money back to the common folk. One girl even told us how the thief paid for her grandmother's medical care. Well, it looks like we jailed Robin Hood, but that doesn't bring us any closer to finding Yojimbo. When we bring the news back to Shigure, he too is conflicted. On the one hand, it sounds like the Lupin is only aiming to assist those in need. But on the other hand, he still broke the law by stealing and selling items that didn't belong to him. The common folk are likely withholding information from us simply out of protest for arresting the Lupin. Nashi points out that if it's information we seek, we should ask the wolf burglar himself. Actually, it's not a bad idea. Shigiri leads us to the second Sagumi base and over to the cell where they are keeping the wolf burglar. He asks why Yojimbo may want the sword, given that the wolf burglar clearly sees the value in stealing it. The Lupin tells us that the value of the sword is obvious, but finding a buyer is almost impossible. If we'd be so kind as to let the wolf burglar free, he'd tell us of the few buyers that would actually go for such a weapon. Hmm, this could lead us to Yojimbo if he was planning to sell the sword. Hildebrand reminds Shigeri that the people of Kugane thought highly of the Lupin, so maybe letting him free wouldn't be so bad. A wolf of honor? Shigeri ponders what the Sekisugumi would think of granting leniency to the Lupin in exchange for his assistance on the case. If they thought he was crazy, would Shigeri be removed from the force? Hildebrand and Nashu hatch up a little idea. They propose Shigeri try out that new hair tonic they bought earlier. A bit confused, Shigure agrees, dumping the whole bottle on his bald head. Just as those before him, the shine of the tonic works, blinding the guard that accompanied us into the room. In the cover of the light, Hildebrand swaps out the wolf burglar for the gentle dead man, once again donning the wolf costume. As Shigure's hair grows in and the light fades, the guard goes over to inspect the cell. Seeing nothing out of the ordinary, Shigure tells him that the flash was a small explosive that unexpectedly went off. Using the cover of the silly excuse, we take our leave immediately with the wolf burglar dressed in the zombie's clothes. As per our arrangement, the wolf burglar leads us beneath the city into the sewers of Kugane to meet his associates. He covers for us as he asks Koju, one of the black market dealers, about Yojimbo. Koju says they've never heard of Yojimbo, and nobody's put word out trying to sell the sword. Not all is lost, though. If Yojimbo didn't intend to sell the sword, then he must be keeping it and such a sword may not be their first target. Hildebrand thinks real hard and concludes that Yojimbo must be a thieving collector of swords. Yep, really nailed that one out of the park, Hildebrand. 
If that's the case, then perhaps Yojimbo would steal again. Say, the Ame no Murakumo? Ah, the blade that the primal Suzano tried to crush us with. It's locked up now in the cogent of the Red's treasure vault. Seems like our only lead once again takes us to the Ruby Sea. Shigeri says he'll catch up with us once he changes out of his conspicuous Sekisugumi attire. Out in the Ruby Sea, we all gather at the docks before heading to the cogent of the Red's domain. Shigure arrives looking rather... different. Really, man, socks and sandals. With that outfit? Ah. <sighs> Alright, back to the mission at hand. We need to get everyone over to the Isle of Zeki, where Susano's sword is. Given we're the only ones that can breathe underwater, and the wolf burglar's bird won't come anywhere near Hildebrand, we're limited in travel options. While we think of a way over to the Isle, Hildebrand asked the wolf burglar why it was that he was interested in the Saboro Sekihiro sword, given that he knew how hard it would be to sell. The wolf burglar tells us of a samurai that took in a young Lupin during the Garlean occupation of Doma. The samurai and Lupin lived in peace together until Akebono came by asking to buy the samurai's blade. A true samurai would never part with their blade, and so Akebono's request was refused. In the coming days, Akebono used his influence to put the samurai under such high debt that the only way was to temporarily relinquish his blade until the funds could be acquired. However, the samurai grew old and tried desperately to clear his debt to earn back his prized sword, the Soboro Sukihiro. He died of old age before the blade and his honor could return to him. This whole time, the wolf burglar was stealing back the blade that belonged to his adoptive father. Well, at this point, I'm not even sure steal is the right word. It sounds like Akabono manipulated the samurai into handing over his blade, and then decided to keep it as payment for the debt. The wolf burglar learned the ways of the shinobi in hopes of reacquiring the blade and carrying it with honor once more. So all of the hits on other valuables was only to scare Akabono into hiring more security, and in doing so, unknowingly reveal the location of the blade. Well, if we want the sword back, we need to catch Yojimbo. We should probably check to see if the pirates at Sakazuki have seen our target. And sure enough, one such pirate believes he spotted Yojimbo a short while ago, along with the dog. In fact, he said the dog was wandering the beach below just before we arrived. Figuring it must be Daigoro, Yojimbo's money-loving dog, we head down to the beach. We spot Daigoro right away, roaming around. While he doesn't come to Hildebrand's calls, he does run over when the wolf burglar leaves a Coben coin on the ground. With the dog's attention, we ask him to bring us to his master, which surprisingly works as we follow the dog down the shoreline. Now face to face again with Yojimbo, Hildebrand asks him to cease his shenanigans and relinquish the Saburo Sakihiro sword at once. Of course, Yojimbo refuses. He says that ever since he was bested in combat by a certain warrior, he has been upping his arsenal for a future rematch. He even claims that soon Suzano's sword will be his too. As we step up to show Yojimbo we mean business, Shigure stops us saying that the responsibility belongs to but before he can finish, Hildebrand steps in front of him, declaring that he will face Yojimbo. Ah, <sighs> when will he learn? Hildebrand cries out to Daigoro, wishing to give him a great big belly rub. Daigoro runs over, perhaps being unable to resist the scent of the wealthy Mandarill family. Hildebrand tells Yojimbo that he will continue to rub Daigoro's belly, making Yojimbo jealous, until the sword is returned. To everyone's surprise, Yojimbo actually gives in, tossing the sword to Hildebrand. But as Hildebrand goes to catch the blade, he steps on Daigoro's tail. A very angry doggo, a chase ensues as Hildebrand runs around the beach with Daigoro close behind. In the end, Daigoro pounces on Hildebrand and buries him in the ground. Now the sword is not with Hildebrand anymore. Instead, the wolf burglar managed to swipe it in the tussle. It's at this moment that the Sekisagume arrive at the beach, obviously following our trail. What poor timing! They ask Shigure to explain why he released a notorious fugitive. Shigure panics as he tries to explain the situation and that he was planning to return him to his cell after they completed their hunt. But as Shigure turns around, Yojimbo, Daigoro, and the wolf burglar are nowhere to be seen. Hildebrand reassures the Sekisugumi that we would bring the wolf burglar and the Saburo Sakahiro sword back to them, but his words fall on deaf ears. Instead, they arrest Shigure for assisting the escape of a criminal and leave for Kugane. Seeing as we're at a loss again for any leads, we head back to Kugane with Hildebrand and Nashu. The inspector believes that the only way out of this whole mess is to prove that Akebono is corrupt. If we can justify the wolf burglar's actions in reclaiming the Soboro Sokihiro sword, that may in turn erase the crimes on Shigiri's head. We wait around while Hildebrand does some sleuthing on Akebono. 
A while later, he returns to us with a letter, which he assumes to be from a fan of his wishing to help. The missive reads, uh, something something of light, you who seeks the strongest of swords, the Saboros like a hero, know that I have laid claim to this most priceless treasure. If you would make it yours, meet me upon Kugane Ohashi for a duel to end all duels. Sincerely, you know who. Hildebrand believes the letter refers to him, the gentleman of light, but we all know that these duels are for us, the warriors of light. Without talking it over, Hildebrand rushes off to the duel. Clearly out of his league, we rush after Hildebrand to reason with him and take our rightful spot in the duel. Over in the Rakasui Gardens outside the duel location, we find the Gentleman of Light, head first to the ground. He was quickly thrown out of the arena by Yojimbo and asked that we take his place in the duel. Ah, just like good old times. I'm getting a bit of deja vu? Duel for a sword? It couldn't be. Gilgamesh? You don't suppose he's still mad about last time, do you? Out on the Kugane Ohashi, Kugane's largest bridge, we find the duelist who challenged us. Of course, it's none other than Yojimbo. As he descends off the mast of a nearby ship, he taunts us, saying that fate has brought us together for this rematch. Wait, rematch? As we begin the humbling of a lifetime, Yojimbo says he's had enough and transforms himself, or rather reveals himself, to be none other than Gilgamesh. He dons all new weapons, including the fabled sword of Susanoo. In an attempt to recreate the Kami's grand attack, Gilgamesh preoccupies us with clones of his as he embiggens himself for a sword slam across the bridge. After quickly dispatching the distractions, we brace for the weakest final smash ever. How many times must we teach you this lesson, Greg? With the duel ending in our favor, Gilgamesh once again begs us for mercy. We take the lousy oaf back to Hildebrand so he can come clean from masquerading around us as Jojimbo this whole time. Gilgamesh apologizes for tossing Hildebrand out of the arena. He was just really looking forward to our third bout. He explains that, in his time away, he struggled to find the strength to face us again. He looked east to claim a stronger sword, but the trip was very costly and long, and in his desperate hunger, he ended up eating poor Enkidu, his painted chicken. To be so hungry that you'd eat a dear friend, I couldn't imagine. You better not imagine. Poor Enkidu, though. But a new ally would take Enkidu's place and that of a stray dog. Diagora was another lost soul in this world, and together they would work to become employed by Akabono as guards. Yojimbo was just a disguise to look the part of a skilled swordsman. It wasn't until he happened to see us here in Fugane that he learned of the Saboro Sakahira sword and hatched a plan to duel us once more. Defeated again, Gilgamesh once again offers his full support to our cause that he may make up for his actions. Hildebrand welcomes him aboard the case as we still have a certain Lupin to track down. We all decided to head back to Nashu to explain what happened, but she surprises us with news of her own. She says that Shigiri has been sentenced to death for letting the wolf burglar free. We need to hurry and unravel the dirty deeds of Akabona if we're to prove Shigiri didn't help a criminal but more of a misunderstood vigilante. We ask around town to find out what the locals know of Akabona. Apparently, he deals in luxury medical supplies shipped in from Razahan. And though the medicines are highly effective, he also has the market cornered and way overprices his goods. Those in desperate need of medicines end up getting involved in risky loans to afford the goods. Ah, if only we had more time. Shigure is set to be executed any minute. Hildebrand suggests that there are many roads to a just end, and this time, we ought to take a shortcut to save our friend. We rush over to the Sekasugumi base in time to catch Shigure preparing his own demise. As we watch from afar, Samurai pulls his blade behind Shigiri, and then tosses it into the air for today the executioner is Hildebrand. He leads the Sekasugumi on a chase around the barracks, eventually climbing a tree out of reach. He screams for Shigiri to make a break for it, but Shigiri won't have it. Instead, he attempts to retain what little honor he has left by forfeiting his own life. But before Shigiri can commit, a voice cries out, claiming Shigiri's honor is still his own. The wolf burglar stands atop the entrance to the barracks, ready to turn himself and the Saburo Sekihiro sword in. After all, the Lupin did agree to a temporary release. The Sekisegumi don't hesitate to take the wolf burglar into custody and send a runner to Akabono to deliver his sword. What timing! After all the craziness, the Sekisegumi dismissed the death sentence and instead assigned Shigeri a new case as punishment. He is to look into the odd dealings Akabono has been up to, or perhaps not. Master Komode of the Sekasugumi comes out to reassure us that nothing is amiss with Akabono and dismisses the assignment. 
But wait, the master is the same guy that we saw with Akabona when he hired those entertainers. Something's off about him. Master Komode asks that we all return to our business and leave Akabono alone. But as he turns away, a red hue fills his eyes. I don't like this. Not one bit. We leave the Sekisugumi barracks to regroup with everyone. Jigure returns to us after a short while, switching back into his proper attire. Before he left though, he noticed Akabono visited the jail, asking when his safe contents would be returned. Hmm. When we first started the case, the wolf burglar had just stolen an unmarked satchel filled with white powder from Akabono. Given Akabono dealt in medicines, and given the reputation of the wolf burglar, he must have wanted to give it to those in need, but since it was unmarked, he likely kept it hidden somewhere instead. And now Akabono is frantically asking for it back. Begs to ask the question, what exactly is in the satchel? The wolf burglar was able to tell Shigeri that the satchel is in the waterways with his associates. We only need to give the proper password. As above, so below. We make our way down below the city to the Lupin's associates. We give the password and Koju hands us the satchel, but we still have yet to identify the contents. We suggest asking a Hanish alchemist for their expertise, so we decide to bring the satchel to the Thavnarian consulate to see if anyone there can assist us. But as we reach the gate of the consulate, the guards tell us that we cannot gain entry without an appointment. In some manner of Hildebrand luck, Godbert arrives at the gate with a representative. The rep just so happens to deal with all chemical goods in Razahan on the daily. He's more than happy to assist a Monderville, whose family has obviously had great dealings with the Sashatra concern. He takes us to the nearby park to look over the white powder. He notes it's definitely of Hainish origin, but it's not intended for medical purposes. Instead, it's dangerous and is forbidden from the market, as, in the wrong hands, it could be used to create a duprism. Such consumption causes the victim to become enthralled into taking commands and the symptoms are near undetectable aside from a pulsing change in eye color. That would explain the red coloring of Master Komode's eyes back at the Sekasugumi barracks. He's being manipulated by Akabono. With no time to waste, we rush over to Akabono's abode and demand he come forth to answer for his dastardly deeds. As we stand awkwardly outside the quiet house, Shigure spots the wolf burglar off to the side. He broke free to help us enact justice. And it just so happens that the Lupin knows that Akabono is off on the Isle of Beko to meet with a silent partner of his. If we hurry, we can get the jump on him in the act of his shady dealings. Over at the Isle of Beko in the Ruby Sea, we lay in wait for Akabono to arrive. We stay hidden as he shows up, baiting out his guest. But nobody could have predicted that Godbert and the Thavnarian representative would be the ones doing the deal. As they talk aloud, we overhear them discussing the use of Duprism to control all of Kugane. But Godber only speaks when addressed, much like he's under the influence of Du Prism himself. Unable to stay quiet as his father is manipulated, Hildebrand rushes out to convince his father to resist the drug. But it's no use. The representative calls forth the hammer to attack us. In a fury of hammer swings, Godbert buries Shigure, Gilgamesh, and the wolf burglar in the ground. But instead of attacking the rest of us, he turns to the two dirty dealers and buries them as well. Seeing an opportunity to end this, Hildebrand rushes his father. It's time for the Manderville signature move, Meteor Drive! As Godbert descends from the heavens, he remembers the good old times he and his son have had on their adventures. The memories bring him back to himself, and reactively, he loops around Hildebrand to set up a reverse Meteor Drive. With Hildebrand now buried as well, Godbert looks around very confused as to what has occurred. I guess we have some explaining and cleanup to do. Akabono and the Thavnarian representative are arrested. The wolf burglar takes back the Saburo Sakahiro sword and gives it to Hildebrand, asking him to place it on his father's grave. The Lupin tells Shigure he can take him back to his jail now so he can wait out his sentence, for he is not blind to the crimes he has committed, regardless of reason. But surprisingly, Shigure states that he'll have to tell his superiors that he hasn't seen hide nor hair of the wolf burglar, implying that the Lupin should take the sword to his father's grave himself. With a simple thanks, the wolf burglar takes his leave. Gilgamesh is moved by the accountability the wolf burglar has for himself, so much so it makes him regret his own actions of eating Enkidu. But as he mourns the loss of his painted chicken, Enkidu walks up behind him. Wait, then who did he eat earlier? In his cry of confusion, the Thavnarian representative throws a pill into Gilgamesh's mouth. Suddenly, his eyes glow red as the representative commands him to spirit them away from this place. Gilgamesh agrees to send them beyond the rift that lies between, to a wondrous world yet unseen. 
As Hildebrand rushes to his friend's aid, a dark puddle envelops all of them. Nashu dives in after them just as the dark portal closes. With our friends lost to the interdimensional rift, we have nothing else to do but take Akabono back to Kugane. After the deceiving merchant is behind bars, Shiguri informs us that after hearing of the incident, the merchants of Radzahan have agreed to a better spread of Hainish medicines across the merchants of Kugane, allowing for a cheaper and more free market. If only Hildebrand were here to see it. Speaking of, I wonder where he ended up. Eh, for now Shiguri has to get back to work and we've got new adventures to get to. We'll leave the big city under the protection of its vigilante, a modern day Robin Hood. That's life. Whichever way you turn, fate sticks out a foot to trip you. Trip us or Hildebrand? You know a certain someone's gonna be right mad her son is lost or worse dead. What are we gonna do now? She had a point. How would we survive a hit from that frying pan? Maybe we should have followed Hildebrand into that rift. At least then we'd be lost too, out of the reach of that dame with fire in her eyes. Why are you just staring at me, saying nothing? Uh, <clears throat> nothing, Cat. Uh, we'll ask Godbert to deliver the news. He seems like the type that can handle getting roughed up. That's Mondeville's strength for you. I'm sure there's nothing to worry about. If I know Hildebrand, he'll turn up at some point. Guaranteed. Be sure to thumbs up and hit the subscribe button down below. Click the bell to be notified of future videos. What did you enjoy or not enjoy about the even further Hildebrand adventures? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.